Hey everybody, welcome back in the Kingdom Speaks studio. Today we have a special guest with us to talk about, well, who knows what we're going to talk about. Maybe, well, let's start with leadership. How about that? And then we'll go from there. Welcome to Kingdom Speak with Pastor Daniel McKillop and Elder Steve Buxton. Thank you. A cool thing happened last week when the Kingdom Speak episode dropped. Yes. And you shot us a text and said, you would not believe what Biblos is talking about this weekend. <laughs> is that crazy? That was not choreographed, folks. For real. For real, it wasn't. So <laughs> so Friday morning, we recorded what, Tuesday? Yeah, Tuesday. Yes, yeah, Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday. We recorded Tuesday. Biblos dropped Thursday, yep. and Friday morning when I got a chance to listen to it, mm -hmm. he is like knocking Zachariah <laughs> out of the park, and that is literally what we were talking about, oh. and it was going to be dropping like mm -hmm. five hours later. Mm -hmm. That's pretty. So cool. I I actually shot him a text message. Yeah, we, we, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So, uh, so on our YouTube channel. People were chiming in. So Joseph Gibson says, y'all must have paired up with Biblos to put out nearly identical podcasts this week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was funny. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I think it would be fair if we say amen to the Biblos network. That would just be fair to yes. say amen to those guys. Can I get an amen? Amen! Can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah! Since we're doing YouTube uh, reviews, let's uh, do one more. So... This is a comment on the value of Good Shepherds, and um, it's pretty good. It says, this episode is off the charts. All this content is amazing. I found Kingdom Speak via my lovely wife, who is a podcast listener. So glad for this ministry you all have niched out. As a minister, it has been great, and our pastor promotes it highly to our entire church. I'm thankful for my pastor, who's Pastor Brian D. Young over at Turning Point Apostolic Church, and that is from... Jeremiah Reeves, and we will say amen to him as well. Yes. Can I get an amen? Amen. Can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah. So, yeah, when we found out Elder Buxton was going to be around. Come on. Woo. There's this new thing now that, you know, here, here's other big news. Mm -hmm. So last Saturday, mm -hmm. our borders opened. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So y'all have heard us for the last two years yep. complain That's right. about our police state that we live in. So if you've been using that as an excuse to not come and see us. You heard it. Yep. Done. Yep. Looking forward to y'all coming on. up and seeing. That's right. So that was big. But there's a new thing in town. So when you come to see us, you don't just preach for us. We try to get a podcast yeah. out of you too. Podcast. And so... We um, had this neat thing happen a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Our dear friend, Pastor Townley, called. There was this whole thing that went on with his church bringing in a special speaker, and they had other stuff planned, and they were both parties were trying to surprise each other, et cetera. And we won. We won. Just so happened. And we have. Were you just driving through? Is that what happened? Like, yeah. yeah. Out for a drive and a wound up in plaster. <laughs> <laughs> We have the one, the only, Bishop Steve Buxton. Yes, sir. Welcome. Come on. Thanks, you. Well, Good yeah. to be here with you guys. Really is. Really is. We are, and, and this is like in the studio. Yeah. yeah. There's, like there's yeah. no Zoom. I can like. Check yeah, it out on YouTube, touch. man. It's can, real. It's legit. It's legit. <laughs> legit. We are, we are so still getting and used to this. And an incredible studio, might I add. Oh, thank beautiful. You. Well, thank beautiful. You. We enjoy it. We really do. February the 11th, 10th, somewhere in there, you were with us via Zoom. Confusion to clarity, I think, is mm -hmm. yes. what we... I remember that. Powerful. You're in your home office, half-dressed. Absolutely. What was you wearing that day? <laughs> oh. What was you wearing? That you know, was I was story. fully dressed. <laughs> Everything didn't quite match, but I was fully dressed. <laughs> <laughs> 
but you know, and his wife, yeah. you know, his wife, yeah, uh, gave him the gears, threw him. She threw me deep under the bus, yeah, and backed over me, yeah, <laughs> a couple of times. It was nice. It was great. <laughs> Oh, well. So we are honored to have you with us today, Good Bishop. Good to be here, Pastor. Rick. How have things mm-hmm. been? You know, things are well. Uh, things have been hectic, just to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Busy, busy. Um, I get to be here with you tonight. And tomorrow, Monday, I am I have to fly back to Newark. And then we're headed to Africa. Um, we're headed, first of all, into Zimbabwe. We're going to be uh, teaching uh, for three days there. I don't know if I have time to get into all of that, but in 2019, I was invited to preach at a Trinitarian conference in Lusaka, Zambia. Uh, at, uh, really cut to the point, at, at, at the end of the meeting, uh, we baptized around 140 pastors and bishops in Jesus' name. Wow. We went and bought a, a portable uh, swimming pool. It has blown up. It has absolutely blown up. Thousands wow. have been baptized since 2019. That's that's thousands. Wow. Uh, I get reports every day. I've shared them with you the last yes. two days, every day, all day long. Uh, and so we will be there for three days of teaching. Then from there, we're going to fly back to Lusaka, Zambia. There will be uh, either 12 or 13 different nations that will be represented there. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? And all of these people are three years old, <laughs> brand new apostolics and, and, and the fire. I will tell you what they say. They say the apostolic message is a bushfire in Africa. Woo. So we will be there. From there, I, I fly through Dubai to Manila. We'll be dedicating our new headquarters church the 23rd of October. From there, I fly to Seoul, Korea, and I'll be meeting a group of pastors that we've been teaching the last two years via Zoom. Hmm. And so when I, when I tell you we've been busy, a little bit busy, but we're, we're busy in the kingdom. But That's he pretty cool. dropped awesome. By he's here with the us. mission field That's of right. Canada. Absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. That's amazing. Wow, what a report. Um, so that kind of leads us to uh, what we want to talk about today. You have, you have a good vantage point by uh, the travel that you've that you make extensively throughout the apostolic movement around the world. To, to really address the, the pulse of where God's moving, which, which, is, which, which is honorable, and also coming with that would be the vulnerabilities that may exist. And what, what, what would the needs be in the apostolic movement? Uh, it's a good question, and I'll do my best to answer that. Um, I, I really feel that there should be a continual reaching of the apostolic church worldwide. Sure. By reaching, I'm not just talking about reaching into other places, but there needs to be internal reaching. There needs to hmm. be spiritual reaching. There needs to be uh, missional and, and, and visionary reaching that always pushes us beyond our comfort zones. I think, I think comfort zones can be, be become very deadly in the apostolic movement. Agreed. Uh, because I think that we would all agree for the last 30 plus years, there is a phenomenon in apostolic Pentecost that we have never dealt with before. And that is acquired wealth. Very good. In our churches. Yes. Our churches yes. now are not storefronts. Our churches yes. now are not the churches on the other sides of the track. Right. In, in many ways, um, uh, in many ways, the tail is now wagging the dog. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so with that being said, if we are not careful, I say we as an apostolic body, we are going to enjoy our beautiful walls. And we're going to be confined within the comfort of blessed, anointed, paid-for walls. However, mm-hmm. the world exists outside of those. And it almost really then could become a culture within the, a, a culture of complacency. Absolutely, within for sure the North American Church. A- absolutely, and at the same someone time. someone that's listening to us right now, Pastor Joseph, that is 
that has oh, communicated with us Utah. from from Nairobi. Nairobi, Kenya. What a great man. I've Love never him. had the privilege of meeting him in person. I will see him in two weeks. Oh, wow. Love him. That's neat. So you take a man like that that is having church in a tent. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is not him. Correct. But the guy that's pastoring in North America, like you're saying, in, in, inside of a beautiful climate-controlled facility, that can become a culture. It, it can. And, and so it, how does it become a culture of death, like what you were just it, saying? It can it, become a culture of death because we can forget the world outside our walls. And what happens inside the confines of our sanctuaries becomes the best-kept secret of every respective town. Wow. And, and, and if we're not careful, the North American church can pro project to the rest of the world that this is the pinnacle of success when it's really not. Mm -hmm. The pinnacle is when everybody is heard. The pinnacle is when everybody's been filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. The pinnacle is when everybody's been baptized in Jesus' name. Yes. We got to go until they all hear and yes. all know. Yes. So, so at, and at the same time, we are incredibly thankful for the resources that God has blessed the North American church with. I mean, this coming November, the population of the world is projected to crest over 8 billion That's right. in November. Mm -hmm. In North America, the U.S., we're only 323 million. Mm -hmm. We don't move the needle. Canada doesn't help move the needle much either. Well, I wasn't going to talk about our neighbors to the north, but yeah. anyhow. <laughs> What are we? What is the population? 32. 32, 33 yeah. million. About 10% 10, 10 of America, okay? Right. But let, let's look at this. One out of every five human beings speaks Mandarin Chinese. 20% mm -hmm. of the population of the world is Chinese. By December, the second 20% is going to be Indian. So 40% of the population of this globe is going to be Indian Mandarin. or or Chinese. Yeah. And if we are not careful, we're going to fool ourselves and to think that we're really getting it done because we filled up our four walls. We need to tear our walls down, actually. Yes. We need to tear our walls. Yes. There's a lot of walls in Pentecost that need to come down. Didn't Elon Musk opinion. say, and I know I'm bringing Elon Musk into a religious discussion here, but when they he's, asked... He's spiritual. <laughs> they, asked, <laughs> they asked him what his biggest concern in the world was, and he talked about the the North American birth rates mm -hmm. compared to the rest of the world. You're right. And how, you know, and he's speaking as an American, you know, and his society, you know, if you're going to continue to affect global culture, well, we have to have more of us. And, you know, the birth rates are plummeting over here compared well, to the rest abortion of the world. abortion absolutely. doesn't help that. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Then there's that. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, back to, to a couple of things to, to respond to your question of, of what I'm seeing. Um, it's hard sometimes to switch my glasses from a worldview to a local view when I am back and forth. I'm in a third world. I was in a third world. I was in Africa last month, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and I'm in Africa last month. I'm in the Serengeti. I'm in the dirt. I'm in villages with the Maasai warriors that sure. have no water, no electricity, no sewer, and we're talking to them about the things of God, and the Holy Ghost falls in the middle of a Maasai village, okay? Wow. I'm there, and then a few hours later, I'm on an airplane, and I'm back in Los Angeles, and I get home to San Diego, and, and, and the brain switching these views hmm. you see a lot you hear a lot and, and and i come back home i come back home and i see church i watch church i feel church but i can't get out of my heart the vast need for apostolic leadership around the world hmm. and i get caught in that tension Do, it, it would almost be claustrophobic coming back into that complacent cultural view of this is the kingdom of God. True. 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 
So we need apostolic leaders. But we have to have apostolic leaders. And by apostolic, I mean okay, more than what doctrinal. That, right. I mean more than doctrinal. Right. I, I'm thinking there, there, there has to be and needs to be this, this, this enlargement of who I am as a preacher. That, that, that I want to be anchored to truth. Okay. And I want to be anchored. I want to be tethered to, to my foundation. But at the same time, everything in me, every, every sinew needs to be screaming because I am stretching so hard to get somewhere I've never been. And, and, and that's where I think the balance is going to be. And, and I believe that the only way for that to truly happen is for there to be a, a solid, sound voice of the elders mm. that works in harmony Good. with the visionary youth and strength well, it's biblical, of the younger. It? It's, it, it, it's biblical. Yes. It's very biblical. Your young men shall. They shall. And your old men shall. They, 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 they shall. And those should never be competing with each other, should they? Never. But then we fall into the cultural, we fall into the cultural morass, especially the North American culture, that really doesn't place great value on elders. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Whereas in other parts of the world, yeah, absolutely, they value the voice of the elder. Sure. And so sure. It, it's not an individual thing or just a personal thing, but I think culturally it's something that we need to understand that that the health of a church and the health of a movement is going to be balanced by the voice of an elder and the vision and strength of a younger. Mm. And so when I look into the word of God, it's, it's amazing to me. The only time success was ever, the word success ever shows up in the Bible Joshua. was Joshua sure. mm-hmm. and Moses. Sure. Mm-hmm. The only time. Sure. And, and he puts a qualifier in there. He, good success. Good success. <laughs> and, yeah. and that comes from transition. Because there cannot be success without With, a successor. There has to be. Oh, that's good. And so somewhere in, in, this, in, the, in the church at large, there needs to be a working together, not a pitting of, but a working together of the elder and the younger. And, mm-hmm. and both parties understanding the value and the importance and the place, the place that, that each of us would, would fill. And, mm-hmm. and, 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 it, and it, it, bal- it balances out the world and it balances out the church. I mean, Moses had a Joshua. Elijah had an Elisha. Paul had a Timothy. John the Baptist had a Jesus. Mm. And and so and so when we look at this, there there was always a a a, a hand shaking, a heart shaking. There was there was teamwork. There was there was a, a, a this harmony. Does that does that not help keep that uh, ecological equilibrium in the spirit? I, I believe it. I believe that it does. I believe that it does. Um, but it has to be addressed. It needs to be talked. It, people don't need to, to shrink uh, f- uh, in their internal persons by addressing this. It's, it's, all, a, it's all a part of leadership. One, to me, one of, the, one of the tragedies of Elisha, I mean, we, we can preach about him doubling the mir- miracles of Elijah, and, and, and that's sure. a good thing. Sure. But, but the miracle that doubled had nothing to do with Elisha. He was dead. Right. He was dead. Right. It happened because of a mantle, a mantle that should have been put upon another man that was taken to the grave. Mm. And wow. I, and That's I think that a concept, yeah. I think that we in the church need to understand that whatever anointing God has placed on us is not ours. And wow. part of our leadership needs to be, I've got to be looking out for tomorrow. Yes. Or I'm taking this to the grave. Yes. Our ministry should outlive us. Wow. Buried in a mantle. He was buried in his mantle. 
Well, he was buried in something that was given to him. To him. Sure. He didn't have proprietorship of that. Right? You are exactly right. Well, this goes back to the discussion that was had with Raymond Woodward a few yeah. uh, months, year, year, about I guess a year, about about a year ago. Yeah. He made a statement that every pastor is a pastor in transition. Mm-hmm. If not, he's not going to be successful. Right. Nobody, even at my, nobody is going to last longer than that church. I am a pastor that's in transition. Exactly. So if the you shepherd, truly understand oh, oh. your role as a shepherd. Right. It's never right. been about me. It's always about him and them. So how do we keep that mantle from being something that we're buried in? Who, who's, who, who bears the brunt of responsibility of keeping that from happening? One thing that quickly comes to my mind is that, there, first of all, it needs to be discussed. We need to have the conversation. Right. Second of all, we need to be open so to that. Awareness. F- awareness. We need awareness. to be open to that fact. And, right. and these, are, these are relatively new subjects even being discussed. It's relatively new that there is these transitional processes. You know, I, I recently transitioned mm-hmm. after close to 40 years of pastoring now assuming the role of bishop, my son is doing a tremendous job pastoring the church. Mm-hmm. But in this process of transition, there's really not a book or a map. <laughs> right. And, you, and, and you're trying right. to figure it out, and you don't want to be a stumbling block. And a lot of them are unique. They're very, they're, there's, there's there's not every a, one of them are there's unique. There's not a cookie-cutter I approach agree. to this. I agree. I agree. I agree. So talking about it is... Is, is, is where it starts. I, I think so. I remember years ago, Brother Johnny Goder was preaching, and I, I, I made some notes. He was a master at, at bringing in little poems and little statements, and he quoted this po- poem, and I, I've had it written in most of my Bibles. I tried to transfer it, and he said, plan more than you can do, then do it. Bite off more than you can chew, then chew it. Then chew it. And then he said, hit your wagon to a star, keep your seat, and there you are. And so I, I think as a pastor, oh, that's good. as a pastor, and, and as, as an apostolic leader, we need to build something bigger than us that's going to live longer than us. Yes. We need to plan more than we can do. Yes. And do it. Bite off more than we can chew and chew, chew it. And so that when our day, when our day is done in that role, we're not done as a minister. We're not done as a leader. But that job is done. Wow. Okay, so this speaks to me of, of Abraham being called yes. to to. To where? Oh, I don't know. Okay. So it was bigger than him. It was totally. It's bigger than him. All he knew really at that moment was what he was supposed to leave. Exactly. And he knew a direction Mm. he was supposed to go. And that wherever he would set his foot, that would become. But he's walking out something that he will, he'll never occupy. Never. It never gets done or it's not apostolic. Right. And is that not really what faith is all about? I would agree. Sure. I would agree. A man of faith is willing to live in a tent, to walk out the perimeters of something that his downline will live in, in houses. Absolutely. So, so really, I'm trying to answer your question. Yeah. Really, I think in order to be a great apostolic leader, the first thing that we need to be is a great follower. And by that I mean we have to be a follower of the Spirit. We have to be a follower of the people. We have to follow them. We have to be plugged into the pulse of what is happening because I, I, I feel that the moment we think we're there, and we know 
we cease to really be an apostolic leader. Wow. Because the wind blows where? Where it wants to blow. Right. Mm, and so I right. think the, the great prerequisite, right. it's not degrees that we hang on walls. It's not, it's not the accumulation of books that we stack on a shelf. It's if I'm going to really be a leader, I first of all have to be a powerful follower. Do you mean like a social media follower? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, exactly not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought yeah. I had you for yeah. a second. I'm like, wow, I, I said something good. And I liked it. I follow a lot yeah. of people. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yeah, you like it. But thumbs see, up. Yeah, thumbs up. And what does that mean? So what does like mean? What does follow mean? And what does friend mean anymore? I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking You're about. You're taking shots at us right now. I'm talking about real spiritual <laughs> following. Yeah. Following on our face, following Follow. on our knees, following in well, prayer. Can you, can you be a leader if you're not a follower? I mean, Paul said. I think you can be a leader, but I don't think you can be an apostolic leader. Oh, very good. Very good. Which in really in essence is what I was saying. Mm. Follow me as. As. as I. As I. The moment that he stopped following is the moment that he could no longer. And really this can break down even into the family unit, can it? Totally. I'm the husband here. I'm the as you follow Christ. Right. Totally thousand percent i'm not saying that i've mastered this by any stretch no for i'm trying sure, for i'm sure. trying mm -hmm. but but the more that i look at apostolic leadership the more that it drives me on into the carpet wow when i realize i don't want to build my own vehicle of leadership because then it's not apostolic i want to be led by the spirit do let, let me ask you this because I've noticed this, and you have a lot. And I'm not if, if this if this gets us down a rabbit trail that that eats up too much time. We'll come back. You look at mission work, and you see pastors who are willing to walk away from works that they had started, go start again. Um, and I am in by no means trying to introduce some transientness to the North American way of doing business, church business. But that being said, if we're not careful, do we as pastors tie our identity again in North America to the churches that we pastor rather than tying them to the kingdom? Well, let's, great question. Let's look at the New Testament model. There is nothing in the New Testament that points a light at how big a church any one man built. Okay. But there is much to be said about men who reproduce themselves in other men. Very good. And if we're not careful, we're going to start comparing ourselves by ourselves. And that's not... And it's not healthy, it's not good, and it's not, not safe. Good. It's just not good. I, I, I think that, that God has blessed the North American church to be a blessing, sure. and to be a mm -hmm. blessor. Sure. Mm -hmm. sure. And that's going to happen when they start looking outside their walls and say, God, you have blessed me. Not that I can put another layer of, of, of gold gilding sure. on my pew. Well, okay, and by extension of this, this is something that I have often pondered, is if a man's ministry is tied to a church, then if he no longer, mm -hmm. like yourself, is senior pastor of said church, he feels like he's lost his identity. Correct. Maybe, so, his, maybe his purpose. Yes. Or purpose. Mm -hmm. so or then, value. Or right. value. Yes. Okay, and then by extension, real quickly, by extension, that affects that church because maybe he stays longer than he should. True. Because <laughs> the fear of being a nobody forces him into an identity that in God's eyes is no longer him. He's no longer there. But without that church, he's nothing. So I, I'm going to I'm going to stay on. 
when the reality is, in the context of what you're saying, there's continued value for the voice of that elder. Exactly. And so when, when he continues to stay, he's not staying for the right reason. It's now it's about him and not them. When I stepped away from pastoring Hilltop Tabernacle, mm-hmm. I'm at my prime. I'm in my early 60s. Mm-hmm. I'm capable of doing the job. Mm-hmm. God's blessed. The church is doing great. Mm-hmm. But I realized it's not fair to them for sure. me to be, sure. for me to try to juggle everything that's happening outside our church borders around the world. And so I had to make a decision that's the hardest decision I've ever made in my life, but I made it because of them. And we are the recipient of the same thing here. Bishop done the same thing. Sure did, yeah. So he gets in a motorhome and begins going through North America. He didn't didn't do it as globally as what you did, but begins going to little home missions churches and helping them. And what a and gift. That, absolutely. What a gift. Absolutely. So his identity was not lost. And the church here has continued, thankfully, by the grace of God to grow, thrive. And the overall kingdom of God has, has, has felt the impact as well. And so that's what I mean by continuing to be apostolic in leadership. I don't, uh, if a man leaves and a church dies, there was something wrong in the foundation Boy, that's good. of that church. It should never be. If it's built on his personality, when he's gone, the church suffers. Yes. If it's built just on his preaching and he's gone and the church suffers, something's wrong. It's not his church. Right. It's God's church. Right. It's God's church. Right. So th- there should be a successor in the wings. My opinion. How, um, without getting too personal, how long did you know? When did the when did God begin dealing with you and 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 preparing you for transition? I knew for a while it was coming, because, and I will tell you how I knew it. I knew it because I knew it because when I would be in the Philippines or be in Africa and I would come home, I would feel so horrible that I was gone. But then I felt, I knew it was so right that I was gone. And it's how do I balance this? How do I justify this? The saints that I had the privilege of pastoring were so accommodating and understanding. And through the years, hundreds traveled with us hundreds through the years um there never really was an issue but i didn't want it to become an issue Mm -hmm. and then at the same time i realized i begin to ask i'll tell you a question i begin to ask myself i begin to ask myself when i'm 65 years old would i want to go hear me would i want to go sit in that church would i want to bring my young neighbors to the church and say that's my pastor that didn't know what a podcast was. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm serious. I started sure. asking these questions, and I and I thought, you know, so really, then it wasn't it wasn't all some super spiritual thing. You looked at the nuts and bolts of leadership and began to ask the hard questions. I, I did, but I want to say it was coupled with some real spiritual oh, sure. spiritual moments. Absolutely, spiritual moments, and and. You know, it had never been something my son and I had discussed. It was never a carrot I put on a stick. Uh, he was doing a great job in Carson City, mm-hmm. proud of what he's doing and, and, and done and on and on and on. Mm-hmm. But there came a moment that I realized, I realized that if I truly love this church like I say I love this church, then they deserve the best. And the best, the best is going to be a young man full of vision full of strength. And while I still have strength in my body, I could continue what God's trying to help me build around the world. So I had to make the decision. And to, I, I'm going to make this assumption that also a young man coming 
that you have that voice of an elder in his life. You would pray it's always that way. You would pray it's always that way. So really at that point in, in Hilltop's history, it wasn't so much, although the role that you played in that transitioned out and, and your son took yes. it, you're really adding another dimension of spiritual uh, vision. That is my passion. To the mix. And heartbeat. Passion <clears throat> and heartbeat. Yes, sir. Wow. Yes, sir. You don't want to leave when the, they're wanting you to leave. <laughs> <laughs> you know the truth. Yeah, that's like, a, that's like a good band, right? They always leave you wanting them to play one more song. Yeah, yeah. you know, and, yep. and, and you know, it's, I didn't retire. I didn't resign. I just transitioned. I'm no longer the pastor, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it's, I, I'm, I'm as busy right now as I've ever been. Uh, yeah, I'm busy. I'm yeah. busy. I'm busy in the kingdom, but still my heart, my heart's at 346 L Street. Right. But I'm thankful for the vision that's there and the leadership that's there. Wow. Hmm. All of this to make sure that a mantle doesn't get buried. You can't bury it. You can't bury it. How many more miracles could have happened in, Eli in Elisha's life had he put it on another man? Mm. Now well, could, could, could they have doubled yeah, a double? I was going to say, do we double double? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look, if Elisha doubled what Elijah did, yes. what could yes. the successor of Elisha have done? Yes. Mm -hmm. How many miracles were aborted? How many stories never written? Yes. Mm -hmm. Simply because it went to the grave. And, and I think that in, the, in, in, in North American church, there needs to be a place for the voice of the elders. This local church is taken taken the, the the thoughts and the lessons and the and the and the heartbeat of 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 bishop mckillick and has put it in a book i have it in my library i sure I, i've read it often sure mm. why because that resonates to the foundation of what this church is yes it it it, it completes a circle yes it's it's not a it's not a place that it was severed it's a place that it was enriched and lengthened, and, and, and it continues. And I think that's very important. Wow. Absolutely. You know, I, I look at the prophet in the Old Testament who died. Let's talk about leadership. Uh, I don't think all apostolic leadership is spiritual. I think there's business ends of apostolic leadership. Okay. We preach it. If we don't take care of ours, we're worse than an infidel. But, sure. but I look at the Old Testament prophet who died, <clears throat> left his wife penniless. She had well, to sell everything she had. Well, she lost, she, she lost her past. Her present was encumbered, and she was about to mortgage absolutely. her future. <laughs> <laughs> now, I take it back to he. That's a reflection on him. Yeah, it's that's... a reflection on him and his leadership. He did not prepare for the inevitable. Yes. And I think that we need to prepare for the inevitable. I So you're telling me that nobody's going to last forever. I, it's exactly <laughs> what I'm saying. And, you another heard it thing, first, folks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and another thing I want to add to that is you're not remembered how you arrive, but you're always remembered how you depart. Oh. Wow. Always. Well, always. And and I think that is as as an older man, as an older preacher, I want to finish strong. I want to finish right. I'm going to I'm not going to be remembered by the revivals I preached when I was in my 20s. <laughs> I'm going to be remembered how how did I handle oh, life yes. in my 60s, 70s and if God provides my 80s. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so there there has to be this discussion and there has to be room made for the elders among us. Because they do have a little, I think, they can bring so, to the table. How do we do that? I think it starts by this conversation and conversations like this. Making room. Because I view that as my responsibility. I, I don't want you as an elder to have to carve out the space. Agreed. I, as the Elisha generation to Elijah 
because uh, I don't want to be Gehazi to Elijah. So let's jump. Okay. Let's jump let's up a generation. Yeah. Then how do I, because I've always been intrigued by this. It was Elisha's responsibility to harvest from Elijah as much as it was Elijah's responsibility to invest in Elijah. Correct. And both of them understanding their roles. And respecting them. And respecting them. Yes. Yes. Because e- Elisha couldn't be Elijah, nor could sure. Elijah be Elisha. Sure, and we wouldn't want him to be. Exactly. We wouldn't want him to be. Exactly. David served his, his generation. generation. Right. And just by simple um, simple statements, like you made just a moment ago, who would want to be inviting their young neighbor family to hear a pastor preach, their pastor preach that doesn't know um, a podcast from a poem. You, you, that's the very literal part of pastoring your generation. It, it, it exactly is. And, and, like some point. And, 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 and here's the thing. This is pro- I'm probably don't have a good filter right now. This is probably a little. That's okay. This is a safe place. Yeah, yeah it's, just it's, just it's just us. It's just four. <laughs> just us it's and just a half us. million it's listeners. Us. I get, no I more. I, and by the way, congratulations, Kingdom Speak, uh, on half a million downloads. That's incredible. Ah, uh, thank you. Great job. It's all about the to, audience. Yes, yeah. it is, and the leadership. Yeah, but it's mm. great. It's a great job. But you know, I, I don't want to put everybody in that pocket, and I want to be careful what I'm saying, but. In my view mm-hmm. of ap- the apostolic Pentecostal world of, in North America, mm-hmm. there's only a handful of aged men that I would really want to, them to be my pastor. Simply because age, they're weak. Mm-hmm. Not weak in doctrine, but physical. Oh, for sure. Strength. For and, sure. And, 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 you know, I'm, I'm rapidly getting there. But... Let's let's be honest. If we make decisions about them and the apostolic leader doesn't make it about him, we're going to make better decisions for the kingdom of God. It should be about the kingdom. Yes. And part yes. of his leadership should be pre- prepare yourself for the old man that you're going to be. Hmm. I, I couldn't. I couldn't say a, a a larger amen and let me speak right now to the young guys my contemporaries and younger i think it it would do us all good to treat those elders how we wish to be treated because in the twinkling of an eye we will be there so true and i think too many young men are are short-sighted in their treatment of an elder failing to realize that's that's me <laughs> that's mm, me tomorrow because it won't be a podcast because i i know what that is but it'll be something that i'm going to go i i can't wrap my head around this uh, mm. there, there there's there's someone else in the wings that needs to come forward and so i think it would do us all good coming full circle back to making that necessary room. Yes, sir. For the voice of elders. Yes, sir. That's one of the agendas of Kingdom Speak. That is something that we speak about often one-on-one with elders is let us help you get stuff in book format. Let us help you get stuff published. We want to harvest yes. as much as of that valuable truth that's in you before we lose you. Or for, for the sake exactly. of today's application, we don't want you to be buried in that mantle. Correct. Correct. Nor do I want to take it to the grave. I don't want to take it to the grave. Right. I don't. So when a man like you can meet a man like me, now be, be, let's drop personalities out of this, okay. meaning a man that doesn't want to be buried in his mantle meets a younger man who doesn't want him to be buried in his mantle. Is it possible for us to keep that from happening? Yeah, it's very possible. 
exceedingly. I mean, possible. that's what we're trying. That's to, what we're doing. Right. I mean, and, and I want to say this: in my travels, the Apostolic Church at large has had ultimate respect for the elders. So there's not there's not a wound I'm licking. <laughs> sure. There's not a drum sure. I'm beating. It's right. just it's just an observation and. The church is shifting. The church is shifting. 20, 30 years ago, the elders died in their pulpits. There's, it's, there's a new paradigm. Right. They're not. Right. They're not dying in their pulpits. Right. They're, they're saying, I don't want to do that to the church. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. I want to put this mantle on a young man and right. run with it. Right. And, and, and so, you know, I, I just... I just think it's it's worthy of the discussion, and this is this is incredible tonight that that we're even sitting around a table talking about this. But for sure, I think this is a, a very necessary conversation for the church. That that let's transition a, a, as we grow and as we move. Let's let's understand that a man transitioning, and I think men that are thinking about transitioning, they need to, they need they need to have some kind of a roadmap. And they need to bury some of their fears and understand th- there is value and worth in their ministry. And there's a much larger world than North America. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Hello. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. There's, there's almost 8 billion of us on this globe. Yes. There's a need for their ministry yes. and a need for their voice. And, and um, so you're saying, you know, not only transition your position but transition your mindset out of a local pastor you transition your mindset to a global absolutely right where can i invest yeah absolutely i might not be preaching here every sunday anymore but where in the world can i help out think of all the brain power that sits on pews think of all the skills and bible knowledge and experience Mm -hmm that some men probably feel like I have no place. Right. I don't mm. belong. I'm not pastoring. Pastoring should not be the pinnacle of apostolic leadership. Who said that it is? Exactly right. Nobody has said it is, but <clears throat> culturally, we have said it is. Oh, yes. <laughs> right. we, do, do you think, here, here's a loaded question. So I'll give you one opportunity to dodge it. Do you think because in North America... By and large, the finances run through the fingers of senior pastors. Do you think that has led to the elevation within the movement of, of the role of the pastor? I understand the role of the pastor. We just done an episode on this. In the local church, is that, that's what it is, okay? I'm not vying or trying to disturb that theological paradigm. But in a ministry discussion, of the fivefold ministry that is gifted to the church, do you think because the role of pastor really does have the balance of of of, of the finances of the kingdom? Absolutely, I won't dodge that. Absolutely, it does. So now, now it's not just an identity thing; it's also a control thing and a power thing. Yes, and and it's unavoidable. In yeah, I'm not sense. saying that's a wrong thing. Yeah, I'm not saying that's a wrong thing. It's it's an unavoidable but thing. But I think it's something we need to talk about. But it's something that needs to be discussed, and it's something that needs to be viewed that, hey, hey, wait just a minute. You know, yesterday this wasn't yours. Today it's yours. You need to remember where that came from. Be a steward. Be a steward. Yeah. Be a steward. Remember yeah. it was there before you were. And it better be there after you. <laughs> Thank oh, you. And, yeah. And then some. Yeah. And then some. Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a work in progress. I th- I think, I think in North America, yeah, it's, it's just a work in progress and we, we need to, we need to not, um, take positions, uh, so deep positions that it becomes a position of friction. Mm-hmm. It needs to be positions of understanding and, and cohesion and and this is all working towards the kingdom jesus jesus tested men's spirit by money <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes he did and 
you know, you've pastored long enough to know that 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 money answers fewer things. All things. That, that, yeah. Yeah. I've looked at the and and this this discussion has been so it's so needed. I've looked at the twelve disciples and wondered what would happen in our day if Jesus was to come and say, I have a day of Pentecost and one of you gets to preach it. Just one. Just <laughs> one. <laughs> Without a choir. <laughs> Yeah. The jockeying. You know it would happen. That would take place. You know it because it happened then. Yeah. It's going to be the greatest. Yeah. And, <laughs> but, but on that moment, the 11 stood with Peter. Mm hmm. And, and I just, I, you, you feel that when certain churches become available. And it's, it just becomes this boiling cauldron of uh, who's going to get the opportunity. Oh, yeah. Who gets the bag? Is it I? <laughs> he he yeah. wasn't there. Yeah. Right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Is it I? Is it I? Is it I? In, in, in all the wrong senses of the word. When the reality is, is that the home missions pastor is worth just as much as the pastor. Absolutely. And, and is, needs the bag more than the other. Yes. Yes. He does. He does. And I, I think the way that we're... The, the point that I want to make in all of this is, is that I think one of the number one things that we need to remember as a leader is it's not about me. Absolutely. It's never been about me. Right. It's always right. been about him. Right. And them. And and if we can stay in, in in that construct, I think our actions are going to be proper. Sorry for beating on the table. No apology needed. Okay, I'll withdraw my apology. <laughs> 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 Just maybe, just 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 maybe, our decisions will be a bit more kingdom centered than than me centric. I pr I pray they are. I pray they are with me. It has to start with me. It has to start with me because I can't affect you if I messed up. I, I, it's got to start with me, and I've got to keep him first. Yeah. And, and I, I can see this bishop with, so it's important. You need to hang around men like me. And it's important that I hang around men like you. I would agree. Again, I'm, I'm not talking personalities at this point. Right. I'm talking generations. Right. Sure. Because there's something about me bringing you to the church that I am now pastoring for the transitionary period of time that I'm responsible for it. To keep that depth there. I'm not just talking about the depth of what is preached. I'm talking about the bench staying gotcha. deep enough. Gotcha. Right? Right. And yet, so so that part keeps me rooted in this is my future. You're not, you're not the past. You're the reminder to me of my future. But it's also a benefit to you. Correct. To exactly. embrace me. Exactly. And to learn from you. Yes. So I, yes. I, the day I, I quit learning is the day I start dying. And, and I, I, I think all men that are in transitional phases of their ministry don't need to make the present the adversary. They need to learn. Oh, that's so good. They need to learn. And I'm trying to learn. Hey, I know what a podcast is now. <laughs> <laughs> And you know what? Old dogs. Oh. Old dogs. Yes. Yeah. They can do it. They can do it. <laughs> These conversations can keep that mantle out of the grave. <laughs> <laughs>